The iPhone SE came out in early 2016 and was a very different iPhone. It was the first one ever to be launched not at the same time as the main iPhone, being a smaller budget option in the world of ever increasingly large smartphones. And it was basically a small iPhone success, making it very powerful, and even to this day, it's fully supported on iOS 14. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the original iPhone SE from 2016. How does it hold up five years later? The iPhone SE is truly something special, and I guess that makes sense considering I'm pretty sure the SE stands for Special Edition. It came out of nowhere in early 2016 and was a shockingly consumer-friendly option from Apple, being affordable and bringing back the much-loved iPhone 5S design. Not everyone was ready to move to the bigger smartphones that were overtaking the market, and the SE gave these people a legitimately great alternative, hacking a real punch and having the same chipset and camera as the iPhone 6. Success. Whether you wanted a great iPhone and needed to save some money or just preferred the smaller size, the SE made a lot of sense for a lot of people. But this was five years ago and a lot has changed since then. The iPhone SE is still fully supported on iOS 14, although this likely will not be the case for iOS 15. Keep in mind, nothing is confirmed, but based on general rumors and Apple's past patterns, I'd say the odds of it getting another version are extremely low. So this gives it until around the September of 2021 to get full updates and remain completely relevant. And even past that, it's still going to be able to download most apps and do most things for another year or two, which is crazy impressive. Apple really is great with keeping their older phones optimized and up to date, and the SC shows that in spades. While on the software side, the SC still holds up, actually using the phone quickly can show its age. I'm not going to talk about how small it is yet, although that is a factor, but the battery life is a major pressing point. Small phone means small battery, and mix that with it being five years old and like being used a decent amount over that amount of time, and there's no question that even if you have a battery that hasn't degraded, you'd be lucky to get a day out of this thing. Of course, this won't be the case for everyone, and there is always options like buying a battery case or a portable charger, or if you're at home anyway, you can just plug it in when you need to. For the extreme basics like texting and calling, the SE is definitely still a legit phone, and if you're thinking of a grandparent or maybe someone younger who hasn't had a phone before, then it is an option, and it's so, so cheap on eBay.com. We're talking around $50 US if you scroll past the more expensive listings and look around a bit. $50 for a smartphone that while having many flaws is able to run the most current version of iOS and do 90% of what the iPhone 12 Pro Max can do. That value is unquestionably amazing and there's no getting around that. And iOS 14 runs pretty well on this phone. There certainly can be slowdowns, but running through the basic UI and small tasks, personally, I find the experience to be quite smooth. Now, some of you might have this phone and are thinking, uh, no, it's pretty slow for me and while that could be the case, it also could just be a degraded battery. To check this, you can go to Settings, Battery, Battery Health, and that percentage there will show you how much capacity of your battery is still able to be fully charged. As long as you're above 80%, you should be okay, but as you approach that number or drop under it, you might start experiencing slowdowns and unexpected shutdowns. Apple does offer battery replacements for $50, which is a fairly solid price and would breathe new life into your phone, but at the same time, you can find a whole iPhone SE on eBay for $50. Bucks. So at some point, you might want to just consider upgrading altogether. If it's the size that really draws you to the iPhone SE, I have good news for you, you do have some better, more modern options. The first is, of course, the second iPhone SE, which came out in 2020, and has the same chipset as the iPhone 11 and decent camera, all for $400 straight up from Apple. If you go through a carrier and get a contract or deal, you likely won't be paying $400, bucks, but it's a good number to use for comparison's sake. The 2020 SE is the same size as the smaller iPhone 6 to the iPhone 8, and it's a great phone that's going to last a very, very long time. But if you really want to get the best of the best for small phones, look no further than the iPhone 12 mini. Costing a hefty $700, but being easily the best small phone on the smartphone market, period. It's the iPhone 12 with zero differences except it's smaller, and I mean very small, being not much bigger than the original iPhone SE in actual size, but with the newer display that actually gives you 5.4 inches of screen real estate. I guess you could say it's certainly a notch ahead of the competition when it comes to small 
phones, but I'd request you don't say that because it's a terrible pun that's been overused since the iPhone 10 came out three and a half years ago. The iPhone SE from 2020 and the iPhone 12 mini are both much more expensive than this phone. And if you're needing a simple budget option and can't pay more than $100, then you really can't get better than the iPhone SE. So if you have an SE right now, you don't need to upgrade if you don't want to or just can't afford it yet. Battery life is probably rough, but besides that, it holds up surprisingly well. But with the initial kind of conclusion about this phone out of the way, why don't we take a step back here and talk about the phone more in depth, starting with the design. The iPhone SE looks basically identical to the iPhone 5S, bringing only a single new color in rose gold and having a fully aluminum body with squared edges and glass antenna bands running across the top and bottom of the back. This is essentially the same design as the 2012 iPhone 5, and it's one of my favorites Apple's ever came out with. I've always found it to look so premium and so classy. It really feels like a top of the line smartphone, or it felt like a top of the line smartphone because 2012 was a long time ago. And this phone is really darn small by today's standards, which is something that while some people might enjoy, I feel like most won't like. Even the smallest of hands will be able to reach all four corners of the display, which is very practical, although the size makes it not so fun for viewing and consuming content. The iPhone SE has a four inch retina display with a resolution of 640 by 1136 and pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. It's an older screen with no true tone and it is LCD, but the pixel density is equal to the newer 2020 iPhone SE as well as the 10R and 11, all phones still being sold by Apple right now. So it's small, but it still looks good to the eye and the quality shouldn't be a concern. We do of course have those thick bezels surrounding the screen and hosting the home button with Touch ID. This is unfortunately first generation Touch ID, which means it's a bit slower than the iPhone 6S and better, but equal to the iPhone 6 or 5S. And it works, it's better than no fingerprint sensor, it's just not the same experience as barely brushing your thumb across it and getting in, you do need to make an effort and hold your finger on the sensor. From a design standpoint, the iPhone SE might just be the perfect iPhone to some people. Even if it is small, it has the elusive legendary headphone jack, it was actually the last iPhone ever to include it, as at the end of 2016 the iPhone 7 came out and dropped it all together. But it isn't all sunshine and roses with the SE. We've already beaten the battery life conversation basically to death, but it is something that I have to cover thoroughly in these reviews because it is often the main struggle users will have on any older phone. The SE has a tiny battery sized at 1624 milliamp hours, and let's just say even if you have a healthy battery, even little to moderate use may require you to give your phone a charge once or twice throughout the day. It really depends on what you do. Texting and calling might not take that much life from it, but things like video or gaming definitely will kill it pretty quick. A concern with any older smartphone is going to be camera quality, and luckily with the iPhone SE, we actually get a pretty impressive 12 megapixel rear sensor with the ability to film video in up to 4K at 30 frames per second. This is basically the same camera as the iPhone 6S, which was a big upgrade over the iPhone 6, and thanks to this, photos have the potential to look quite nice, even taking into account how much better newer iPhones keep getting. With good lighting outdoors, you can capture a stunning image, and the phone will more than satisfy your point and shooting needs. It's when we go indoors or any lower light situations where it really starts to show the age, with grainy, noisy, blurry photos being the result more often than not. Newer iPhones have really improved in this department, particularly with the iPhone 11 and better. I mean, of course, every year, you know, the cameras are going to be getting better. That being said, if you have this phone, you can still rest easy knowing it can take potentially great pictures in the right circumstances, and it should be able to capture your memories just fine. The selfie camera, on the other hand, does leave a lot to be desired. This is one of the few differences between the SE and the 6S, as the SE only gives you 1.2 megapixels, same as the iPhone 6, while the 6S boosted it to 5 megapixels. This is a really bad selfie here, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in it, although that doesn't help. All in all, the iPhone SE camera performs very well taking the age into account, and it getting that new sensor from the 6S was an amazing decision on Apple's part. Where the SE manages to hold up the best, though, is going to be the technical specifications, thanks to Apple's A9 chipset and 2 gigabytes of RAM. The introduction of the A9 was kind of the start of Apple's dominance and exponential growth in processing power as they started blowing away the competition, and it's a big reason this phone has been supported for as long as it has. 2 gigabytes of RAM might not sound like a lot, but the 6S was actually the first iPhone to have more than 1 gig, so for 2016, this was a pretty top-of-the-line option for an iPhone. And Apple never needs to use as much RAM as their competitors because they make their own software and thus are able to properly optimize it. Thanks to this, the iPhone SE has always been a fast and smooth phone, and even on iOS 14, the experience is still very much pleasant. This doesn't feel like a 5-year-old smartphone 
smartphone, not by a long shot. And again, I just have to give Apple props for how well they've been managing to support users on their older phones. It's a great 180 from the past days of phones slowing down with new updates. And while that can still happen to an extent, we've come a long way from, say, iOS 9 on the iPhone 4S. The SE manages to hold its own, and it can basically do anything you'd want a phone on iOS 14 to do, with some exceptions, of course, but nearly any app you want to download or use is completely available to you. That's what makes this phone such good value, to the point that even if the battery dies as soon as you unplug it, it's still kind of worth it just to have a device that can run iOS 14 at all. Good luck finding an Android phone for $50 that runs the latest software version, and even if you load a custom ROM yourself, I would be shocked if your performance is anywhere near what the 2016 iPhone SE is still somehow capable of. And don't forget, this was like the budget option at the time. Most manufacturers, when they make a budget option smartphone, they don't support it as long as their main smartphones. But not Apple, the SE still holds up just as well as the 6S, and suffice to say, the iPhone SE was, is, and always will be something special. While the newer iPhone SE was nice to see, it doesn't have the same impact as this phone. Partly because beyond the chipset, the specs just aren't as great as the iPhone 11, and partly because there are so many iPhone options right now. And don't get me wrong, I love the amount of variety and choice Apple is giving us. I think that's the way it should be. But nostalgia sometimes does get the better of me, and when the iPhone SE came out, it really shook up how I viewed Apple and how their business plan worked moving forward. A fully fledged iPhone coming out early in the year being an actual budget option. Well, you know, compared to their most expensive phone. The only attempt at a budget phone in the past has been the iPhone 5C, and that was an overpriced joke, all things considered. Not that I hate the 5C, by the way, I owned it myself, and I actually really love the phone, so please don't leave me mean comments, my fragile ego can't take it. <laughs> anyway, uh, the iPhone SE is an awesome phone, and it set a really positive precedent for Apple's moves in the future. And to see it holding up so darn well five years later is truly fantastic. If you have this phone right now, you don't need to upgrade yet. Although, if you want to, I recommend you might as well, because it is older at this point, and battery life on anything except the 2020 iPhone SE is seriously amazing in Apple's current lineup, and that alone is probably worth the money you'd be spending, so again, I'll link my iPhone buying guide in the description below. But if you're in the boat that needs a budget smartphone or a second phone for emergencies, or maybe a phone for a senior or someone who just wants to call and text people or a kid, at around $50, it's really hard to argue against picking up an iPhone SE. It's so darn cheap, I mean, that's less than a brand new video game. Basically a tank of gas. Last thing I'll say is avoid the 16 gigabyte model like the plague, it's just not enough space. Trust me on this one. Any of you out there still using the iPhone SE? How's your battery life? And is iOS 14 going well for you? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting or helpful, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. With that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.